Sup, nerds, I'm Wes. And I'm Aaron. We're Never We're Gaming, and today we are questing for the mystical city of El Dorado. So El Dorado is a deck building game where it's not your traditional deck building game where you've got your two resources of purchasing an attack and you're just going head to head. Your resources are all movement, and some of those movement can also be used for purchasing. And so you're trying to get your dude all the way across the map to the mystical city of El Dorado and get there first. Mm -hmm. So you've got your hand of starting cards, and then you could play some of those cards to buy new cards. So like that, very traditional deck builder where you're buying new cards, putting them in your discard pile. Once you go through your deck, you shuffle it all up, deal your new hand, and that's how you go. Yep. And it can go really, really quick because sometimes you're just like, all right, I'm gonna just play these, just move, done. All right, play this hand, just move. All right, I'm gonna buy this card, play this hand, move, done. Mm -hmm. So it does, the turns move really, really quick in this game. I'm gonna go back to where you said traditional deck builder because this is kind of based on the most traditional of all deck builders, Dominion, which is like the original deck builder and the way that you purchase things. There's a set lineup of cards that you purchase from and you can only buy those cards until somebody completely buys the last card from a pile. Then we have these new cards that we'll put over there, which is a little, that's different than Dominion where you don't like have refreshing Piles. But there's not like a purchase deck that you shuffle up and, and get see random what's out cards. there. Yeah, like this you can actually have a strategy and go for it. Like, I want this card. There's three of them available. I'm going to go for that card. You know, and some of the newer deck builders like, you know, the DC and the Legendary and Clank. on and on and on. Like, it's just like, okay, what's the card that comes up? Oh, that's the best card in the yeah. deck. I want that card. Like, there's not any of that in this game. Like, there are cards that obje are objectively better and they cost more. And you can get them from the deck. It's just, you know, from the from the lineup, you just have to put that into the lineup for others to be able to buy too. And, and early on when I was first starting this game, I was I got hung up on like, okay, well, there's only three cards in each of these decks. I don't want to take the last one because then somebody else gets to pick what card fills in there. Mm -hmm. And while that can be kind of important in a four-player game because there's only three cards in each deck, so hypothetically, if I buy the last card... The next player buys, puts it out there and buys a card. The next player buys a card. The next player buys a card because you don't buy one card per turn. I could miss out on an entire option of card. But that's really unlikely because of what most of these cards cost. For every person to have five coins in their hand is really unlikely. So mm -hmm. it could happen in a four-player game. But really, don't, don't get hung up on that. What does make this different is the race, though. This is a race to the end. So... You, it's not about buying the best cards and getting the most victory points or any of that stuff like most deck builders are about. This is getting a deck, refining it to being able to move across the landscapes. You need machetes to move through the forest. You need the ores to paddle through all these rivers and things. You need gold to be able to, I guess, trade with people. I think that's kind of what... Move through the market. Yeah, yeah. there's just like different markets and you just spend coins to move through, for them, through them instead. Um, there's a couple spots on the board where you can just discard two cards to be able to move through that space. Well, there are some spots that you have to cull cards from your hand to move through them. So, yeah, so remove it from the it, game. It's, it's good that there's culling that you can get rid of those cards you don't really want, but that's the only way to move through those spaces. And it's definitely not like a big part of the game. It's not like, all right, I'm going to cull down this deck and super refine it. It's just these four cards that I draw every turn. There are a handful of cards which allow you to burn them for a special ability. Like mm -hmm. you can use them as like, half a uh, so all cards can be used as half a coin when it comes to the purchasing phase so you can kind of like hold off on using its ability until you actually need it mm -hmm. you know some of them it's you know a lot of movement you're like do i want to move you know do i want to waste my big movement right now or do i want to hold on to you know just spend it as a half a coin buy something else and wait for this until you know when i get a little further in the game where it's actually going to be more useful because you could draw it at a time where you're like okay well i can only move two spaces and we talked about how some cards are movement or purchase so like aaron said there's the yellow spots on the board which are market spaces or just there there's space you have to spend coins to move through them you can also spend those coin cards to buy things from the lineup so mm -hmm. like the photographer is a two coin card so you play that card to give you two coins to spend in the market a lot of the starting cards are one two three or four money some of the bigger cards can get all the way up to five so you know things like that that's how you purchase and you purchase or move with it so there's some really tough decisions of like oh man i really need 
three coins to, or four coins to get through this spot, do I want to buy a four coin card or do I want to cut through there? And it's also a game kind of like Clank where the point of the game is not just to get the cards with the most points or to kill your opponent because there are no points on the cards. The point of the game is to race and be the first one here. So you also have to make sure you're not getting hung up on like, oh, I'm just going to buy these best cards. Like you really need to be moving as much as you possibly can. This game is two to four players, but the two player game is actually kind of a variant because you don't just play as your one pawn. You actually play with two heroes on the board and you're trying to move them all the way across. So it makes it a way more interesting game. I feel like I, mm -hmm. I, I think this game shines at two players. Like I kind of enjoy having to move two guys and it makes it where you can, you know, like, okay, I'm going to spend this card to move this guy and spend this card to move this guy. And you can really get some interesting, you know, moving and you, like, it's still a race to the end. You still have to get both of them till the end. Mm -hmm. But I feel like sometimes there are points when you're just racing with one guy that you'd be like, oh, I can't use this card on this guy. I had another guy on the board I could. Because the first time we played it, we played as two players just to try it out. And then we went and played four players. I'm like, I kind of like two players better. <laughs> I would agree. I think it really does shine at two players. It's my favorite way to play it. Because you're balancing, like... Do I want to get this guy there first and then get the other guy there once I have better cards? Or do I want to try to move them both there simultaneously? And if I'm moving both my guys and Aaron's moving one, I can feel like, man, Aaron's crushing it because his guy's way across the board, but my both my guys could get there before both his get there. The only reason why shooting one guy across the board could be a legitimate strategy is between most of these boards, there is this little squiggly piece that is something it's a barrier it's a, the first person to cross it has to pay whatever is on it they're typically not a big deal to cross through but it's just another thing to do for being there first and that's the tiebreaker so at the end of the game Aaron and i both got our guys to there in the same round whoever has the most of those or no, the highest number on them because they're all numbered well it's the most first and then there's a tiebreaker of whoever's the highest okay. if you guys got the same amount of these Aaron's, barriers Aaron's my die is in human form so El Dorado also comes with uh, the caves expansion which is a little mini expansion which you just place these cave tokens on the cave spots on the board and if you end your turn next to a cave token you get to explore the cave and it gives you a cool little bonus which like this is one machete which I can use at any point on in yeah. a future turn or immediately to move one space. They're they're all good. Yeah. Like there are no bad things in the base game yeah. with the case. Burn a card. So like our first game we didn't play with it. It's like let's get the first base game down and then add the expansions. Don't. I, I don't think that should be an expansion. I think it should just be included in the game. Always play with it. Because if you don't want to deal with them and you want to just ignore it, you can. If you do want to stop next to a cave, or if you happen to stop next to a cave. It's just a good thing, so why wouldn't you include it in the game? I could see if you're playing with someone who hasn't really played deck builders, like, or they're just overwhelmed by a lot of moving parts, like, you know, like, okay, well, now you stop there, you get this, and you get this, and you're like, oh, what do I do with all these things? I mean, you just spend them. They're kind of like a one-time use card, so I like them. I think it's an excellent little mini expansion that's included in the game. I honestly was really surprised at how much I enjoyed Quest for El Dorado. Like, looking at it, I was like, okay, well, it's a really basic deck builder where you move. It's like Clank, but simplified, because you're buying cards to help you move. Mm -hmm. But playing it, like, how quick it moves, and, and it's simple, but it's so clean. It just, it works so well together that I enjoyed it so much, especially at that two-player game. So I, I definitely recommend that you guys at least check this out. If you don't like game, if you just want really heavy, crunchy Euros, like, probably isn't for you. But if you just love games, like, even if you don't typically play lighter games, I still recommend you at least check it out because I was really surprised at how much I enjoyed it. I would definitely agree. I think that this is an excellent deck builder. Um, I really enjoy it as a two player deck builder too. Like there's not many deck builders out there that like play better at two players, but this one I think kind of shines at two players. Um, especially with that little variant, you know, making it that way. This game has a lot of replayability in the way that you build the map. The, each of these map tiles are double sided. So they have completely different, mm -hmm. you know, ways that you have to go through it. Like laying these tiles in different patterns changes it up. There's like uh, in the the rule book, it shows you a couple different ones where, like, 
you know, there's mountains blocking it off, so you have to, like, zigzag back and forth, and, like, it makes it a really long game. Um, you know, if you use all the tiles, it makes it longer. If you, you know, build crazy patterns, you can build wherever you want. Once you've played it and you understand it, you could just, you know, like, like we did here, we're just like, oh, let's, that looks really cool. That'd be a fun map, like, kind of split and race around. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do whatever you want with these tiles, and I think that variability and that, you know, replayability really adds to this game as well you know i really enjoy it i think you know the theme works really well you get this little indiana jones hat so you can, you can wear it it definitely feels like you're going on a quest to el dorado if that sounds interesting to you we'll have a link in the description box down below where you can get yourself a copy and while you're down there if you wouldn't mind subscribing to our channel because you will never be bored